Ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and droids across our beloved empire, welcome to another episode of Arnold Hollow Net News, the only news network you'll ever need because you have no other choice. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today, where we are going to be doing a weekly news roundup for Galaxy Heroes, as well as some data mines pointing to a new character. Spoiler, it looks like Bo Katan is indeed coming. Then we're going to do some wild speculation. The crown jewel of today's discussion. Discussion. It's been talked about now. Now that we kind of have a good indication, Bo Katan is coming. We're looking for what is the next legendary journey or possibly Galactic Legends character. And I'm thinking we are going to be getting a brand new Mandalorian hero of Mandalore with the Dark Saber. So it's going to be an exciting day. So, guys, hit that like button. Get ready to party. Oh, what? Party? We got a birthday party in the Kyber Club? Well, Let's go over there really quick, come on! Ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and Jaws across the galaxy, we got a birthday in the house! And it's our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends! It's been two years since the launch of Raid, and Raid is bigger and better than ever before. And I'm being told to celebrate Raid's second year birthday. They've asked me to respond to a couple of questions. Where's your favorite place to play the game? Besides being able to play on my mobile Imperial data pad, I can also play on my Imperial supercomputer, where I can really push the polygons and high frames per second, and the game looks so dang buttery smooth. What made you fall in love with raid in all seriousness raid shadow legends has pushed the boundaries when it comes to the quality and the graphics of their characters this month with raids to your anniversary they've got six straight weeks of anniversary events and tournaments and they're even launching a brand new game mode clan versus clan tournament and if that's not enough they're releasing the first champion inside of the brand new shadowkin faction and if you want to get a huge head start in raids hit the link in the video description or scan my qr code and if you're a new New player, you'll be getting 100,000 silver, 50 gems, three ancient shards, and a free epic champion, Joe Toon. All this treasure will be waiting for you right up here, but you gotta be quick because these rewards are only available for the next 30 days. So, in case you missed it, we've been talking about a lot of this stuff over the past couple streams, but I want to make sure you guys know about it. When the Dark Trooper, by the way, one of my absolute favorite characters in a long time in Galaxy Heroes. We've made so many videos about the Dark Trooper, but regardless, when the Dark Trooper was added in Galaxy of Heroes, the day that patch dropped, you may or may not have noticed. If not, you're going to know right now. The child has gone missing with the mo most recent besides the one just from last night. And some people thought at first it may have been a bug, but there's no Grogu with Beskar Armor Mandalore. There's no baby sound effects with this character right here like there used to be. And even in the journey event for Beskar Armor Mandalorian, the child has gone missing. Now, yes, IG-11 still is a child, but that is the season one variant of the child. I think this might be the first different kind of puzzle normally when puzzles get added to galaxy heroes it's normally through the use of uh, going to a variety of websites and different discord servers yada 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 but we've never had an in-game easter egg or a teaser and i think now especially after a recent patch and this has been going on for over a week now the developers have not talked about or even acknowledged this so i do not think this is a bug at this point i think we are going to be seeing another variant of Beskar Armor Mandalore. And I'm thinking it's going to be the version where he has the Beskar Pike or possibly even the Darksaber that we see at the end of Season 2. But it's not just this. That's giving me that indication that we're going to be seeing that. Let's go ahead and show some gameplay here and uh, talk a bit more about this situation. Now, a couple weeks ago, we got uh, our first little teaser about Bo-Katan coming to Star Wars Galaxy Heroes. And developers kind of went on this little... This little funny spiel, they responded to someone who put too many double negatives inside of their uh, question to the developers, and they said 14, which basically, basically has the negatives cancel each other out and turns it into a positive. This was our first indication back in February that it looks like Bo-Katan might be coming to Star Wars Galaxy. However, we talked about this data mine a couple days ago. In case you did not see that in the stream, you're going to see it right now. This, I think, finally solidifies the fact that we will be seeing Bo-Katan and possibly a bit more in SWGH events. You guys got to check them out. Links down below. One of the most important resources out there for the Galaxy Viewers community. One of our favorite data miners, SDT Barbarossa, pulled out in the data mine this little gem right here. 
And we talked about this a while ago, but uh, my first thoughts were, yeah, this is basically showing that Bo-Katan's coming. They don't just make this for no reason whatsoever. This looks like it's going to be a leader ability or a unique ability of some sort. If you actually go ahead and open up the file here, you actually see it's a passive ability inside of the link. It's hard to see right now, but if you click on it, it says ability UI passive, stronger together. So this symbol right here is supposed to be an ability that's called stronger together. And the text of the data mine shows that it's a passive ability. Yeah, Bo-Katan's coming. I suspect it's going to be later on this month. And if you don't know why this means Bo-Katan, this is the Night Owl Signet for Bo-Katan's crew. Long story short, when Darth Maul took over Mandalore, Death Watch basically split. Yeah, Death Watch joining Darth Maul. And those who followed Bo-Katan, they became the Night Owls. And of course, we saw the Night Owls in the Mandalorian TV show. Let's take this a step further. We're starting to see all these Mandalorian characters. Moff Gideon being the, the, the not the last season one character. Instead, that armor was the last season one. But we have two season one characters that we got. Still nothing to go on with them. And now we're getting into these season two characters. That being the Dark Trooper. Mysteriously, the child goes missing inside of the game. And then, take it one step further after that, we got Bo-Katan. It seems like, ladies and gentlemen, that we are going to be building up to an event where we have to recapture the child because if you recall let's give you a little summary of season two of the mandalorian we recall that moff gideon when he sent the dark troopers he activated the dark troopers deployed him they got the child back and he held grogu hostage and the, the whole quest for the rest of season two was the mandalorian pairing up with people like bo katan to take on moff gideon and get the child back so i am pretty much almost certain at this point that this is not a bug that we're seeing in game with the missing Grogu with the season two uh, Beskar Armor Mandalorian. I'm almost certain that we are going to be seeing another version of the Mandalorian. We're going to have an event, and that event's going to probably require things like Moff Gideon, possibly the armor, and then things like Dark Trooper as well as Bo Katan. There's going to be some legendary event, but the question now begs that the community's been talking about is this going to be a galactic legend? Because usually every six months, a major character happens and best Armor mandalorian was not a major character you guys know my opinion i feel like best Armor mandalorian is a little bit lackluster in that department the last major characters we had was in regards to galactic legend sith eternal as well as looking we're basically at six months since that happened and we have no idea what the track record or expectations are for galactic legends last year we got two sets of galactic legends that doesn't mean that this year we're gonna get two sets of galactic legends we might only get one we might get three sets of galactic legends my money is right now if i had to be a betting man i think we are going to get a new mandalorian at some point but i am thinking it's going to be a mandalorian journey continues event possibly like jedi knight luke skywalker and you might be crazy you're saying oh we just got a we just got mandalorian three months ago why would we get another one well let me point you to jedi knight luke skywalker we got jedi knight luke skywalker and about three months later we got jedi master luke skywalker so it very well could be possible the only reason why i'm not leaning towards a galactic legend is is because I'm not sure who would be the opposing Galactic Legend. Normally, we have a light side Galactic Legend and a dark side. And developers said that when they do Galactic Legends, they want to release them in pairs. Now, there's been discussion of a Boba Fett. I'm not quite seeing uh, Boba Fett at this point. We already got Moff Gideon. Originally, I thought if they were going to do a, a Mandalorian Galactic Legend, you'd get Moff Gideon because those are the direct opposites. So right now, I think it's safe to kind of bet that it's going to be a Journey Continues event. Very much so, like Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. We're going to have to wait and see, but I think uh, that's something that we should be looking forward to in the next couple months here because usually these marquee characters that are being dropped, they're going to be needed for some sort of big event. And it seems like the tea leaves are pointing towards a new Mandalorian. Very much so like how we read the tea leaves and we knew Dark Trooper was coming miles in advance. We are now saying Bo-Katan is coming miles in advance. And based off this teaser that I think we have in game and the lack of developers acknowledging it or addressing it in the recent patch last night, I'm almost certain this is kind of their first in-game puzzle for us to break down on what the future is looking like for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And the last thing we're gonna talk about in today's video a lot of people have been asking me about this in my streams i've been kind of saying it uh here and there throughout a couple streams but let's put it in video format because i still get questions about it, even though i've addressed it on stream we are going to be getting some upcoming changes to the pit challenge you know this was last week uh, last end of last week's news right here so we're a little late to it in terms of putting it into a video format so you guys probably already know at this point there are going to be some incoming changes to the challenge pit raid and there's some good things and there seems to be bad things in my opinion the best way i could summarize this is it seems like it's one step forward two steps backwards the good thing is one of my biggest complaints we talked about some of the feedback i had for the pit challenge tier 
One of the biggest complaints is that it required people to be glued to airplane mode, and they also required them to be glued to Discord and all the guild to be playing at the same time to enter the rank rate at 100%, do the run, and stop before posting damage. And you could be waiting 20, 30, 40 minutes. Some people wait an hour before their guild is able to drop damage together. CG responded and say they don't want to have it. They don't want the reliance of things like Discord and airplane mode. So they are fixing it. Firstly, the good part is, is no longer if someone accidentally posts, it doesn't screw over the rest of the guild, which is fantastic. So it doesn't matter if you go in at 100% of the rank rate or you go in on 20%. In phase one, for example, it's going to make no difference when you enter battle. What's going to be changing, however, is it's going to become more difficult. So this is the two steps backward here, two steps backwards here. And it seems like we might be needing more teams than we did before to clear the hero to the clear the challenge pit rank or rate. What is going to be changing is instead of this clause right here that said for every 20% of its health loss, the unit gains 75% offense and speed stacking. So it would basically ramp up four times every 20, or I'm sorry, five times every 20%. And now it's going to say for each 2% health loss this battle, this unit gains 20% offense and speed stacking. And these bonuses increase by an additional 20% each time so every two percent it's gonna ramp up by 20 percent so mathematically it's gonna ramp up a lot more harshly towards you rather than the old implementation where every 20 percent damage it would ramp up a little bit so it's gonna get a lot more difficult this is the two steps backwards this is meant to be a challenge for super end game players so i get the difficulty it's unfortunate they're making it even more difficult so it seems like the barrier to play this might be a little bit higher we're gonna have to wait and see. We're gonna to to see if our current uh, teams still are viable, like Jawa, Supreme Leader, Kylo Ren, uh, the Jedi, for example. So we're gonna to to basically re relearn the challenge pit's uh, rancor rate. So right now I'm standing two steps back, one step forward. I'm glad they're at least removing uh, the fact that we need to rely on Discord. And I guess the other great thing is normally when someone accidentally posts damage, they'd be the most hated person in the guild. No longer is that going to be a concern, but it looks like we're gonna need more teams. And they also are gonna probably stop Supreme Leader Kylo Ren's souls. And a couple of the comments that they had in regards to this is one of my other complaints and concerns is I wish they would make the arrow magnifiers, the relegate exclusive pieces kind of stretch out a bit more throughout the other rankings out there because right now if you're not making top five you're getting pretty garbage rewards now there, there's some people are asking hey can we try to up the rewards for ranks uh 26 to 52 they're saying they're looking at it i will sniff around and see what happens so it's good that it's on the radar no guarantees if they're going to be upping the arrow magnifiers i'm hoping they do i kind of wish the rank raid was a similar reward structure like territory battles where it's a guild effort and everyone in the guild more or less is getting the same exact rewards maybe for number one fine you get one or two more but for all those other middle tier ranks it would be great if everyone else kind of got the same amount of rewards so that's great to hear and one more thing i want to point out because i even criticized cg about this uh when we first got wind of this uh that changes were coming they said that the changes to this raid were being discussed long before the slkr phase solo became known i said it seemed like and from this from ex the exterior i don't talk to them so from the outside the second that solo happened we saw a response in a matter of a few hours so my interpretation was they didn't like that solo they're gonna change it but they said that uh they said that the solo was something they were considering afterwards so it wasn't slkr solo triggering them wanting to do some changes to the rank or rate so just putting it out there i just kind of want to correct one of my previous statements on there and this is they're trying to make sure that the best performing squads as of now will still be possible in these upcoming changes and just one more iteration this raid was always meant to be a late game content for powerful guilds at the challenge tier raid which doesn't have a, any easier tiers and is gated by an entry of relic five thus it is meant to be difficult and likely require a strong guild working closely together to complete so it's not gonna be getting any easier it's only gonna be going to be getting more difficult and one more thing i want to point out because you guys maybe see crashes in my game now and again i'm not alone some people said oh it's your blue sex oh it's just your imperial data pad is buggy no there's been a lot of crashes going on in galaxy of heroes lately and they said that there has been a noticeable uptick in crashes and it's not being ignored by cg so in case you're getting I don't know crash grand arena battles probably the most uh critical uh type of battles out there if you're experiencing crashes they do know that there are some issues going on out there so ladies and gentlemen gungans androids on our way out hit that like button one more time thank you so much for coming by today for another episode of Arnold hollow net news let me know what your thoughts are 
down below in the video comments are you kind of with me that you're seeing this in-game beskar armor being an indication that something more is to come and is it going to be a legendary a journey continues or are we even looking at galactic legends possibly keep your eyes tuned to the channel i will make sure you guys know the full kit reveal bo katan when they drop it in the meantime like comment down below and subscribe and more importantly as you always say around here say it with me dang it's great to be in the empire today thank you guys so much for watching peace out and i'll see you in the next video gary roll out that outro